cancer within the company needs to be pulled out right away or it's going to bring everybody else down and cause more and more problems. I've experienced this as a young business owner in my 20s, Tim. This happened to me and I didn't react quickly enough and it just snowballed. And this key employee started spreading stories, which were lies. They were telling me one thing and they started telling the rest of the staff another thing. And it just all went downhill really quickly. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Powerful Man Show. I am your host, Doug Holt, with my co-host, Tim, the Powerful Man Matthews. Tim, how you doing, brother? Doing great. You? I'm doing fantastic, man. Uh, really looking forward to this episode and the rest of my day and just really excited to get at it. Mm, I love it. I love it. So, Tim, one of the topics we talked about that's come up before is what happens as a business owner in particular, but this could relate to somebody else, but as a business owner, what happens when you become friends with an employee or a staff member and that person is bringing down your business? Wow. It's a big topic. It's a, it's a tough line as well to tread, isn't it? You know, between being the leader of the company and then taking a stand for, for the company and what it is you're creating and bringing out the best in people at the same time without getting too emotionally attached or involved. It's, it's a tough one. It is a tough one. And we're going to try to keep this episode short, guys, and get to the meat of it because this is a problem that we see with a lot of the businesses that you and I go in as consultants or working with the men that are coming through the program is they're great guys. They are just great men who want to do great in the world. And what ends up happening often is they become really good friends or they bring a friend into the business. They become really good friends with a key employee or they bring a friend in who seemingly in their own words takes advantage. They screw up in a major way or take advantage of the relationship. And time and time again, this pattern keeps repeating itself. And they feel for the person. They feel for the employee. Um, they feel for their friend, really. They don't feel for the employee. They feel for their friend who happens to be an employee. And that really stops them from allowing the business to move forward. And what I see happening, Tim, is to use an analogy, the business is like a ship, right? It's a ship in the ocean going forward. It's going to a destination. And some ships go faster than others and some are bigger than others. But what happens is this key employee, this friend, right? It could be a family member as well, by the way. But this friend, was we'll called a friend for the rest of the episode, this friend is the anchor that keeps dragging them down. And as time goes on, this person makes more and more mistakes. They are more and more lackadaisical. They get lazy. And that anchor becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, where it just pulls the boss, the business owner, or you, the listener, pulls you down, right? It pulls you down. You're starting to think about it. What do I do? You know, Frank, Joe, whoever it is, <laughs> isn't working as hard, but yeah, they've got problems at home. Or yeah, but they're a nice person. You start making excuses for them. And then you find yourself getting pulled back into the business even more. You find yourself patching their work. You find yourself complaining about them. You also find your relationship drifting away. Do you ever see this with the men, Tim? Yes, <laughs> in short. <laughs> you know, my, my response to this is, you know, if they were your friend, what would they want for you? You know, it's, it's very easy to be on one side of the fence and, and take the approach from the business owner and be like, I feel this certain way and I don't want to upset him and, you know, so on and so forth. But if he was really your friend, then would he really want you to be feeling the way you're feeling because you're sacrificing what you love, what's such a huge part of you, your business, and then also paying prices elsewhere in your relationships or your health or whatever. It's never just, you know, just in the business, is it? It's going to have a ripple effect out. You know, would he really want that for you? And if he would want that for you, then is, is, is he really a friend? And if he wouldn't want that for you, then you're in the clear, right? Well, yeah. And so that's a perfect way of looking at it. And I didn't actually think of it as much like that. But what I did think of it, and I addressed this recently to one of the men you and I know and love, is I said, look, you're a smart business person. 
if you go in, if you went into another business as a consultant, I hired you, let's just say I paid you a hundred thousand to come into the business and consult. You know, one is, are you worth it? And the answer of course is yes. Second question is, if this situation was happening in the business where you had a key employee or key staff member pulling the business down consistently and repeatedly, what would you recommend that business owner do? And every time the answer is, well, obviously get rid of them. They got yeah, cancer, right? We all know that. Cancer within the company needs to be, a cancer in general needs to be pulled out right away or it's going to bring everybody else down and cause more and more problems. I've experienced this as a young business owner in my 20s, Tim. This happened to me. And I didn't react quickly enough. And I had employees embezzle money from me. And I didn't react quickly enough to the whole situation. And it just snowballed. And this key employee started spreading stories, which were lies. They were telling me one thing. And they started telling the rest of the staff another thing. Um, and it just all went downhill really quickly. It was really a tough time for me because not only did I feel betrayed and people took money from me, but these are my friends. I lost friends in the same bout. Now, had I actually handled the situation purely as a business owner and taken my emotion out of it, the decision would have been better for both of us. You know, they would have exited the company and been able to start what their real passion was anyway, and I wouldn't have gotten burnt. And maybe, just maybe, we would have been able to hold on or repair that friendship, which has now been lost forever. That's a shame. So much ego comes into it, doesn't it? Not, not from, ego is probably not the right word. Emotion would be a better word. So much emotion gets entangled in the decision making that it's so easy to lose sight of what to do because we play the, the game by the rules of having the best interests of the other person at heart, assuming that they do too. But, you know, you just, you just can't always be that way. You can have the best interests and the best intent like you did and at the same time not, not be responsible for other people's success. You know, it's, we can get into a habit of wanting to save people, can't we? Oh, well, I don't want him to, you know, go through hard times or I don't want him to have to find another job or whatever. But what if that's just his path? What if that's just what he needs to learn right now, but by you or me or anyone trying to save him, you're robbing him of that lesson. And as a result, you're both paying the price and your friendship is as well. Rather than being able to communicate consciously and openly and say, hey, this is what's coming up for me. And, you know, I love you dearly as a friend, but right now, you know, I'm suffering in this relationship, in the professional relationship. It's it's really not working for me. And, you know, I love you and I want to see you grow and, and thrive. And, you know, it's been a while now. I don't think that's going to be here. It can't be here. I'm here to support you still outside of this. You know, and if he then wanted to take that in a certain way whereby you are, you know, being mean to him or whatever, then again, back to my original point, in my opinion, he's not really being a friend. If anything, he's being very selfish. Guys, I'm interrupting this episode because I want to know, do you feel bored, burnt out, or broken? Discover the system that over 300 businessmen are using to let go of the grind, find inner peace, and unlock unlimited personal power so they can have more time, more intimacy, and better sex while living a life they love without stressing about work or feeling like a fraud. Head over to thepowerfulman.com forward slash 11 to see what this is all about. All right, let's get back to the episode. Well, it's so true, right? And, you know, there's, there's always a jockeying of position, right? We talk about the alpha, but whenever there's an alpha, there has to be a beta. There has to be somebody under that position. And that can cause some animosity. And I think it's, it's the difference between being friendly and allowing that friendship to put you in a position as a business owner where you're taken advantage of. And in these cases, again, if you come in as a consultant, what would you do, right? All of these cases, when we talk to these guys, they, they immediately say, well, you got to get rid of the person. But yet some people don't do it. 
and I don't think they do it sometimes, Tim. Sometimes I think they don't take action because they're afraid of what the other person will think of them. They're afraid of being the bad guy. When, as you said, really, what if you're holding this person back from their true destiny? Or what if you're holding them back and really enabling them to play small? Hmm. That, yeah, that's also not I, what a friend does. Yeah, very true. You know, I think... He, it's very true. It's kind of like tough love, isn't it? You know, um, and we touched on this a moment ago, but it's almost like where else is that showing up in your life as well? As the business owner who's tolerating this, we've spoken on previous episodes how you train people how to treat you. Then where else is that lack of decisiveness, let's say, showing up in other areas of your life? Because it will be. And it's a great opportunity for you to be able to, to take stock and look at it and reflect and, you know, where else is this showing up in my life? Where else am I caring more about what others think about me than I am about myself? Where else am I putting others before me and making my life hard? Yeah, absolutely. These are great questions to ask and, and take time to reflect. You know, and are you protecting the business? Are you protecting your family? Are you protecting your other employees' families? Mm. What about your headspace? Right? That yeah. headspace of stress coming about that employee or that key person in your company, you're taking that out in your social time. You're taking that out everywhere you go. That energy is being manifested time and time again. Really because you're scared to take action. Yeah, I know. We spoke on the other episode about settling, you know, um, when you feel like you're settling in your marriage, but really it's everywhere else in your life. It's, this is like the other conversation, isn't it? This is like the other side of the fence to, hey, you might be experiencing problems in your marriage, but this is really where it's, not where it's stemming from, but where it's also showing up. It, there's so many avenues to take with this. I mean, the one that's coming to, to my mind is where, how else are you sabotaging your success? Maybe you're tolerating yeah, it might be either love for this person, but also you are just sabotaging and it's something that you do. You keep yourself in a holding pattern for longer than you need to be because you know that if you get rid of someone, that means you're going to step up even more and be seen even more or have even more or whatever it is. And that's all just too uncomfortable for you. So it's easier to play small and use this as an excuse and use the drama around it to... To, and the more you, <laughs> the truth is as well, the more you tell the story, the, the more gravity and, and emotion the story takes on. And before you know it, it's got a life of its own. It turns into this huge monster when it, it never needed to be. You know, the reality is you guys just may not be a good fit. That's okay. Oh, it's, it's completely okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And the more we hold on to those stories, right? They, as you said, they become bigger and bigger and bigger. And we start to delay the inevitable. And that puts a gap between you and the other person. Because trust me, guys, the other person knows there's something wrong. They know it. They know it. And by you allowing them to continue, you're almost validating them and saying that they're right. And they're allowed to do what they're doing. And that's causing stagnation in other areas of their life as well. So Tim, I think it's so great what you said is, you know, for the men is to take stock where they are and where else this is showing up because it doesn't just show up in one place. It shows up in all kinds of places. And guys, if this resonates with you, this is time for you to be decisive, for you to take the reins, for you to step up and step to the line in this area of your life and take some massive action. So, Tim, if you were to leave these guys with, you know, a couple things that they could do right now, if they find themselves in this situation where they're like, crap, I've got a family member, a friend, or somebody, and I know they're not towing their, their weight, and it's been a repeating problem, what advice would you give them? Um, definitely take stock first. You know, look at how long has this been going on for you? What price have you paid in other areas of your life? So, you know, in... in in other words, where else is this showing up in your life? And really get clear with that because this could be a great lesson for you because it will be showing up in other areas of your life. And then ask yourself, why is that? Now, why have I tolerated this? If, if you're the alumni that are listening, you guys have a great advantage because you can just go through the fundamentals of alpha. 
um, you guys that haven't yet experienced that, then maybe listen to the, the previous episode, <clears throat> excuse me, on unlocking personal power so you can put yourself in a more empowered state to then take some action on this with clarity. So take stock um, and get perspective on this as well. You know, this isn't personal. If it was a real friend, if you really cared, then he'd want the best for you and vice versa. And then just have the conversation. Commit to operating in a different way whereby, just like in the fundamentals of Alpha, you make a decision based on what feels right. Because as long as you want to wrestle and resist what you're feeling compelled to do, it's going to exhaust you. You may not know it, but often you don't know how heavy something is until you put it down. Um, so I'd really encourage you guys to do this if this is something that's coming up for you. I love it. Peace, power, and flow. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. Um, we'd love it if you'd leave us a review. That's how other men like you find shows like this where the conversations are at another level and they can actually help other men. So we'd appreciate you leaving an honest five-star review for us wherever you might find this and sharing it with a man that you feel could actually enjoy this conversation. Until next time, that's it for Tim and I, and we'll see you again on The Powerful Man Show.